to come home can you hear him make that decision to join the family of god by being baptized and following him all the way join us this saturday as we celebrate another homecoming baptism whether it's your first time or you're returning join thousands from across the world by walking with jesus to the next level
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the Footprints of Hope, part three, walking with Jesus to the next level. Oh, yes. I tell you, good evening, Kamara. How good are you? Good evening, my friend. I am very well, thank you. How are you? I am very well -er. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's a beautiful Wednesday evening, everyone, and we just want to welcome everyone in-house and yes. those online. If you're feeling sweet in Jesus, just text in the chat, God is good. That's right. And so we are coming to you live from Mount Salem here in Montego Bay, Jamaica, and we can brace ourselves for another beautiful Wednesday night worship service tomorrow. Yes, Alan, we have some persons. We are excited. We just couldn't wait to welcome you tonight yes. to another power-packed, uplifting, soul-steering right. moment yes. in Jesus' name. If you're a visitor and you're on WCCN, Facebook, YouTube, or you are on Ram Tally Boulevard, such as the Stenets or Brother Campbell, we want to welcome you. Yes. Our overseas partners, we are delighted to have you. Those of you who are watching on Jamaica Union's YouTube page, we welcome you, you into this space. Yes. God is about to do something. Have you ever heard about women fighting in the Bible? Yes, you have to stay tuned tonight and share that link because we have some story to tell you. Amari, you're talking about Ramtali Boulevard yes. in Cornwall Court, Montego Cornwall Court. Bay. Good evening, Cornwall Courts. I hope you're blessed tonight on all the other sites. Well, the praise team standing by to bless all of us with good singing as usual. And so we're appealing to everyone here and out there, sing and dance and praise of the Lord course. with us. But before we go over to the praise team, Kamara, as usual, take us to prayer. No problem. Let us pray. Oh, our Father and our King, Lord, we come before you this evening and we are grateful. Yes. We are grateful in spite of, because you are an in spite of God. Lord, we pray that you will bless our visitors, bless our friends, our families, our brothers and our sisters. May they receive the blessing they come in search of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We go over now to our praise team. Sing along. Amen. Amen. I want to say good evening to you. Welcome to this another wonderful evening, a wonderful Wednesday evening, power-packed prayer meeting, of course, tonight for this Footprints of Hope gospel, gospel campaign. Of course... We are here this evening to shout to the Lord and also to lift his name on high. And we want wherever you are just to join us in singing these wonderful songs for praise and worship. So we start off by singing. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came to say one more time. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Oh, 
now we're going to shout to the Lord all the earth. Let us sing power and majesty. Praise to our King. Can we sing?
nothing compares to the promise that we have in him. Join us now as we sing our theme song, Footprints of Hope. Shall we stand? Centuries ago, when you walked through the garden alone, you left even then your footprints of hope to be followed by men down the road. Adam and Eve, yes, they walked the path, but though the they hopelessly found, but you sent a savior. 4,000 years later, so many young and old now can tell of your footprints of hope, footprints of love, footprints of follow and we cross away, footprints of life, footprints of truth. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to come together. Lord, as we are even here, for those who have joined us online, Lord, we believe that a special blessing awaits each person. We present into your hands, Lord, every participant. We present the evangelists. We ask God that you may do something special tonight. May every heart be blessed. And Father, we ask that for those who are in the valley of decision, that tonight will be the night to make that ultimate decision for you. And Lord, we give you honor. We give you praise in advance. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another evening of Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus to the next level. It is my joy and honor to welcome you all, wherever you are joining us from, and however you are joining us, if you are joining us via WCCN, Facebook, Instagram, Bless TV, or any social media platform. We welcome you in a very special way. God has been tremendously good to us. Indeed, each night he is taking us higher and higher to the next level in his word. Uh, for those of our overseas um, partners, we welcome you in a very special way. Um, those in the United States of America, but even those who are unrecognized uh, or established partners right across the world in Europe, in further North America, in, 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 in Asia, uh, right across the world, we want to welcome you in a very special way. There are some friends that we have too who join us each night um, from the Caribbean, and we want to welcome you. Uh, as a matter of fact, in Footprints 2, um, you were uh, with us 
uh, in, 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 in fuller numbers, uh, but we still want to recognize you. Our friends in Belize, um, special recognition to you. And we come home um, to our lovely island of Jamaica, right across Jamaica, and in particular, West Jamaica Conference territory in St. Elizabeth, in Westmoreland, in Hanover, and St. James, wherever you are, in an open air, in the open air, uh, uh, under some Pesa, uh, in a church, or in whatever structure you have established, we welcome you in a very special way. And those who are in-house, the best seat is to be in-house. And we are so delighted to have those who are in-house, face-to-face. If you're happy and you know it, say amen in-house. Indeed, you are happy. And we welcome you all and trust and hope that this evening will be another special encounter. As a matter of fact, God will take us to the next level. We want to say congratulations to all those who have surrendered their hearts to the Lord in baptism. And there are a number of individuals who have done so. But for many individuals, this coming Sabbath is going to be the Sabbath of victory, the Sabbath of commitment, the Sabbath when all heaven will rejoice, for they will make their stand in the watery grave of baptism. We continue to pray for you. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a tent that is specially pitched on compound just for prayer. So when you feel like you are alone, somebody is praying for you. In your, in your decision moment, be well assured that somebody is praying for you. We are praying for you. As a matter of fact, th hundreds, yeah, thousands of individuals are praying together 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. And, and, and God is a prayer answering God. We will continue to give you our special gifts for those who take 12 visitors, Pastor Rose told you, are a dozen. Even on, in, at our sites, our downlink sites, if you take these individuals, you will indeed get your gift. May God truly bless us tonight in a, a mark way as he has never blessed before. And may as we speak to nations that right across this word, the gospel will be heard in every language. God bless you. Welcome one, welcome all, and may God continue to lead out in this campaign. It's time to come home. Can you hear him? Make that decision to join the family of God by being baptized and following him all the way. Join us this Saturday as we celebrate another homecoming baptism. Whether it's your first time or your returning, join thousands from across the world by walking with Jesus to the next level. Good, good night, everyone. A special good evening to those who are in house and those who are viewing online. My name is Upton Cole. I'm a sergeant of police. And I'm here tonight to do a presentation on road safety. I have only seven minutes, and so I'll be going through it very quickly. And if we are to look at a definition for road safety, it is the method and measures used to prevent road users from being killed or seriously injured. And when we say road users, we are talking about pedestrians. Who are pedestrians? 
Pedestrians are you who are sitting there who walk daily on our roads. Drivers, motorcyclists, pillion riders, pedal cyclists. Those are the persons who use our roads on a daily basis. Now, in understanding the definition, what is really saying, it is how to use our roads safely to save life. And in doing that, then we have, to, we have what we call the safe system approach. And the safe system approach speaks to safer roads. Safer roads has to do with a proper road infrastructure. Because if our roads are not ready at potholes and even surface, of course we are going to have um, accidents. What about signage, proper signage? What about hard and soft shoulders? What about guardrails? So if a driver loses his way, the guardrail is there to protect them. What about the rumble strip? The rumble strip is what you find at the airport. When you drive, you, you get this vibration. It assists a driver in case they are sleeping or veering off the road. That, that vibration will awake them. And so they'll be able to continue their journey without leaving the road. What about safer people? We want to encourage safe, responsible driving and behavior of all our road users. We want to ensure that when our drivers get out there, they are doing the right thing. We want to ensure that you as pedestrian, when you get out there, you do the right thing, you use the pedestrian crossing. Too many times I have seen accidents where the pedestrian crossing is only less than, less than a chain and persons are crossing the road, not utilizing what is provided for them so they can cross the road safely. And if we look at the gas station out by Howard Cook, we will see those workers from the BPO. They will cross the road exactly in front of the gas station whilst there is a crosswalk right in front of the fire station. So we need to utilize what is there to, to, to keep us safe. What about safe speeds? We want to ensure that our vehicles Rise on the road, they are traveling at safe speeds. Our maximum speed limit is 80 kilometers, unless you are on the toll road. But we find that persons drive more than 80 kilometers per hour. Why 80 kilometers per hour? Because that is the safe in the that is the speed in the event that you may have a collision that you will give yourself a chance to survive that accident. Anything over that, then you are talking about getting yourself killed. What about safer vehicles? We want, we are now looking at specifications because Jamaica does not have specification. Any vehicle comes into Jamaica. So we want to have specification to ensure that the vehicles that are coming in Jamaica, they have safety features. And that is why we have modern vehicles have what we call seat belt. And persons do not want to use seat belts, but seat belts save your life. Um, Seatbelt gives you 50% chance of surviving a crash. What about the earbag? The earbag gives you another 10%. So together, you have 60% chance of surviving a crash. So I want to encourage someone, whenever you get into a vehicle, wear your seatbelt. Post-crash care. Too many times we have seen accident outside there and person lie on the road for hours. If they get immediate assistance, chances of they would have survived. What about paramedics? Based on that inexperience or that untrained person trying to assist persons died. So, so if we're talking about road safety, then we have to have all these things in place. So I have a video here to assist us, or to assist you to have a better understanding.
trying to get up my video, but it's not happening. So this is what I will say. Seatbelt. If you are not wearing a seatbelt, and in the event that there's a collision, this is what happened. And, and the law of physics, law of motion in physics, um, tells you this. If a vehicle is traveling and it collided with that object or with another vehicle, although that vehicle stopped, the occupants of that vehicle continue to move forward. If you are not wearing a seat belt, you're going to go through the windscreen. So it is best to wear a seat belt. And that is why I endorse about a child or children wearing seat belt. So we must wear our seat belt. All right? Seat belt save lives. And finally, I want to leave this with you. Last year, 488 persons died from 425 crashes, which was one more than the year before. As I speak, up to the end, up to Friday, the end of last week, 30 persons died. 30 persons died from 28 accidents. What is it I'm saying? I'm saying that 13 less than the year before died in nine less accidents. Yes, we are having a decrease, but guess what happened? 30 lives is too much. If we are to walk, ride, and drive on our road, utilizing the crosswalk or pedestrian crossing, using our seat belts, we can save lives. It is full time now. We educate ourselves as to the best practices in saving life. And that's my presentation for this evening. would be in store but when we stand on holy ground our smallest prayer is heard instead of on our circumstance our Those mighty 
looking forward to that beautiful city of gold. Aren't you looking forward to that city? We may not have those gold watches now and be able to touch gold in this life, but we'll be walking on streets of gold in heaven. Amen. That beautiful city of gold. that looks o'er the valley of death and its glories can never be told there the sun it never sets and the leaves they never fade in that beautiful city of gold there the sun of the cross every lamb we have brought to the fold shall be there as bright jewels or crowns to adorn in that beautiful city
Praise the Lord. Indeed, we are looking forward to that city of gold. I want to go to that city of gold. What about you? I am sure you also want to be in that city of gold. Indeed, God has been richly good to us, and we are blessed to be here this evening. And so at this time, the ushers are waiting on us uh, to receive the evening's offering. God has been mightily good. And no matter what we are going through, we can still say that we serve a good, good God. And because God has been blessing us, and we're going to give back to God of the blessings that we have received of him. And so at this time, I know that uh, those of you who are watching online also want to participate in worship by giving. And so you will see the information coming up on the screen that will uh, indicate how you may support this ministry through giving and how you can worship God through giving. And so at this time, I invite you all to our heads with me as we give God thanks for the evening's gifts. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the gifts that your people have brought to your house of praise. We thank you, God, for those who be giving through the online portal. We ask your continued blessing upon your children that will always have adequate to care for their needs and to bless the ministry and the work that you have left for us to do. We ask, Father, that your continued blessing will be upon this program as we wait upon you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Struggling with prayer life, Bible study, or just difficulty making that life-changing decision? We are here to help. Contact the Footprints Counseling and Prayer Teams at the West Jamaica Conference. Give us a call at 876-656-7823 or send us a WhatsApp message at 876-373-2390. Connect with us as we walk with Jesus to the next level. Mercy seat this evening. I'm joined by Pastor Delgado Black from the Sheffield District of Churches and Pastor Omar Palmer from the Palm, Str Palm Spring uh, Church in Florida. We are more than happy that God has lent us life and strength so that we can be in his presence this evening. But before we uh, take the prayer request and we'll pray, we are going to invite the foster triplets to pray, to sing for us as we prepare our minds and hearts. to mention a few we have Gwendolyn Nemhard who will be doing a surgery and she is very worried about it we want to put uh, before the Lord our uh, former Custos uh, Custos uh, 
or Costas Corrodas, um, who is not doing so well, uh, we want to put him before the Lord. I, I know Elder Black, Pastor Black rather, is joining us live from the site um, in Negril, and so I'm going to give him the chance to go ahead and to pray for the many requests we have in the chat and for those that he has on his heart. He'll just take one minute to do that. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are indeed grateful for tonight. We thank you for your love and your mercies, your blessings and your keeping care over our lives. Father, tonight I place before you these many requests that are sent in. I ask God that you remember our, our customers, we remember Sister Gwendolyn and some of them, the many others that are there. I ask that you will touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet so that God, your healing power will move through them. Whatever the situations are that they are now facing, these requests, God, you know them and you know how to solve them. You are the great problem solver. You are the great burden bearer and you can do all things. I ask that you will remember Mr. Mika Garden and the staff there at the Lucy Tux office today, God, who ask for special prayer. I pray that you will cover them under your blood. I pray that you will, you will just wash them and you will make them clean. God, I ask tonight that you will continue to be with this program. They are souls to be saved and God, the harvest is ending. The summer is passing and still yet some persons are not yet saved. I pray tonight, Jesus, that those of us who need salvation, those of us who need your saving grace, that tonight, God, we will, we will reach out and we will grab on to you because through you we live and move and have our being and our only hope of salvation is in you tonight, sweet Jesus. I pray that you'll forgive us of where we have sinned and fallen short. And when time on earth shall be no more, all those who online, all those who have made their request would have received them through your power. And we will all hear well done from your lips. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. 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 Pastor Palmer will continue to lift us up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne and we continue to petition your throne of grace, we seek now your full measure and presence even in the atmosphere where we dwell. Lord, we give you full permission to take control of every aspect of our being because we know that you are God and there is none like you. And so I join tonight, dear Lord, with Pastor Black and I join with Pastor Friends and I join with the Footprints of Hope evangelistic series and ask your God to, even now as I pray, reach out through the influence and power and potency of the Holy Spirit and touch someone right now. Your grace is needed more than ever because even as I pray, there's a person who is between and betwixt life and death. There's somebody who has been straddled by the enemy and someone who is hamstrung by the devil seeking deliverance, oh God. But I pray tonight that you may give that person the power of repentance. Give that person the victory. Give that person the hope so that they could fight the good fight of faith. Almighty God, we look within the confines of our hearts and we see how sin has inculcated and somehow incapacitated your people. And we pray tonight for your grace, your marvelous grace to have full sway and influence in somebody's heart. We pray that tonight, Father, that barrier, that obstacle, whatever it is that it's standing in the way, I don't know why, Lord, but I'm feeling that there's somebody right now, even as they're listening to this prayer, they are struggling between whether or not to accept you. And so I ask that you may remove anything that is standing in the way and break any chain and 
give somebody the victory tonight so that they could experience hope. Lord, we thank you for the victories won. We thank you for the fact that you have given somebody, even right now, that overcoming power. And so, Father, as I close this prayer, I ask that your Holy Spirit will be opened up to each heart and to each mind and will control the process and lead us to the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We pray this and we ask this with the forgiveness of our sin, with the expectation of repentance and the joy of your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Father, we invite you to hear our prayers. We invite you to translate those groanings that cannot be uttered. And for those who have made their requests but they were not named, we are praying that your power will attend to each one of them according to your divine will and according to your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight, salvation has come to all hearts. Yes. Whether you're in-house or out there in the site, in your room, wherever you're worshiping from, we praise the Lord tonight for his goodness to all of us. And so we pray that you will stand ready to hear the proclamation of the everlasting gospel night after night, Sabbath after Sabbath. We've been listening to the man of God. God has his back. And we thank you for the tons of prayers that you've been praying for our evangelist. He's ready. And so I declare to you, none other than Pastor Glenn O. Samuels, President of West Jamaica Conference and the evangelist for the Footprints of Hope, walking with Jesus to the next level. Pray in your heart that the word tonight will do wonders for every worshiper. Amen. And just before he comes, we will be blessed with a special musical item, the Song of Meditation which will be done by the anointed ones. If you have not yet shared the link, here is your opportunity to do so. Amen. If you have not yet subscribed, yes. now is the time to do so. That's right. And I charge you, say a prayer in your heart for the evangelist and one for yourself, that the seed that will be planted here tonight will fall on good ground. Hear he him, then thee. Anointed ones. That seems too hard to climb And I recall learning How great mountain climbers Conquer one step at a time I've watched blue rivers With strong current raging And pondered if they could be crossed but my rivers and mountains became soft jail of fountain because of the old rugged cross. We have a Savior, such a wonderful Savior. Mercy's atonement Sigh for sin's judgment, grace made intercession, I'm free. Cause the pain and the heartaches, the sufferings I can't take, purchase redemption for me. And the true Lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation, he died on the old rugged tree. 
Now I've walked down sidewalks of bright neon cities where skyscrapers reach for the sky. I see the rich and the famous in their glamour and glitter as they search for some joy in the night. But a few blocks from Main Street in some old cardboard ghetto, another unknown life is lost. But whether penthouse or skid row, there's one thing I do know, there's hope in the old rugged cross. We have a Savior, such a wonderful Savior. Mercy's atonement, stifled for sin's judgment, grace made intercession, I'm free. Cause the pain and the heartaches, the sufferings I can't take, purchase redemption for me. And the true man of Calvary is the hope of salvation. He died on the old rugged tree. I've walked down sidewalks of bright neon cities where skyscrapers reach for the sky. And the rich and the famous in their glamour and glitter. Yes, they search for some joy in the night. But a few blocks from Main Street in some old cardboard ghetto, another unknown life is lost. But whether penthouse or skid row, there's one thing I do know. There's hope in the old rugged cross. Oh, we have a Savior, such a wonderful Savior. Mercy's atonement, side of sin's judgment. Grace made intercession, I'm free. Cause the pain and the heartaches, sufferings I can't take. Purchase redemption for me. And the true Lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation. He died on the old rugged tree. Atonement, sigh for sin's judgment, grace made intercession, I'm free. Cause the pain and the heartaches, the sufferings I can't take, purchase redemption for me. And the true Lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation, he died on the old rugged tree. Grace made intercession, I'm free. Cause the pain and the heartaches, the sufferings I can't take. Purchase redemption for me. And the true Lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation. He died on the old rugged tree. Cause the true Lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation. He died on the old rugged tree. Cause the true Lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation. He died on the old rugged tree.
what a song, what a song, what a song. The true lamb of Calvary is the hope of salvation. He died on the old rugged tree, and that's who we lift up. That's who we praise, the son of the living God, the savior of the world. Thank you so much. I'm blessed with all of our singers. Do you? I don't know if the music uh, to you what it does to me, and I want to thank God for music. What do you say? No, 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 no. I'm in the wrong place. Uh, uh, your ears not hearing what my ears are hearing. I want to thank God for music. What do you say? We thank God for all of the singers. I never said all of the sinners. We thank God for them too, but I thank God for all of the singers. Are you listening to me? And uh, I want to express my joy for one more opportunity to share and to thank God for his goodness. You know, we take so many things for granted. And I, I sat at my desk a few moments ago reminiscing on some of the exciting journeys of the past, the opportunities that God has blessed us with to carry the gospel. I think of of uh, some days with, with Val Wellington over on the southern side. I was not even yet a graduate. And I remembered we were traversing the area from Southfield to Bellevue to Monroe to all over the place. And I, I, I got to loving a song that they sang then for the truth and the right. Precious Lord, have I stood, have these knees bowed low as oft as they could, have these hands done as much as they really should. And here comes my favorite part, I want to walk as close to thee as I possibly can. And then the chorus said, Lord, I want to walk just as close as I can and do my best for my fellow man. And if I fail, let me feel just one touch of your hand. I want to walk just as close as I possibly can. Then I think of the days with a group called the Lennon Brothers. Some are now, uh, well, I think the one in England, uh, well, I think one is still in England, most of whom are in the U.S., Passford and uh, Linton and the others. If there's anybody who could make a guitar talk, it would have been Linton. These guys, lovingly, we were all over the place bringing the everlasting gospel, and there was nothing to them. Th these are young people. Nothing to them like, like sharing and spreading the word. I mean, we would walk for, for miles, and we would go through the rain, and it was a joy to be in the company of young people who had no other joy, no greater joy than spreading the everlasting gospel. And I thank God for the journey it has been. By the way, uh, Nicole, I, I, a pastor called me today. I, I'm looking, for, looking forward to meeting him. Never met, but they've been calling for a while. Uh, and, uh, uh, and they said, Pastor, we want you to come to Philadelphia. Uh, Nicole came to us, and she blessed our socks off. I'm still wearing my socks tonight. Uh, she, he talked about the blessing that the anointed one has been to them. Uh, and I got so many. So when you're coming, when you're coming, please bring the anointed ones. Well, I'll ask the anointed ones to bring me. <laughs> but I have been blessed. And I, I tell you, I haven't had the, I can't recall using the word no in all of my life as I have been doing over the last couple of months. So let me say, let me say to all of you, Thank you for the invitation. But I still does, boy, only have 24 hours in each day, seven days in each week, and uh, I know you have the same. And I hope you'll understand, but I try my best, and I, I really love the opportunity, and I, I look forward to those I can visit with, I believe with all my heart, we're in the closing days. I've lost some friends. I've lost younger friends than I am who have been with me in the spreading of the gospel. I've lost older friends than I am. I've lost friends my own age. I've lost people who I hardly got to know. But the joy 
of seeing them surrender their lives to Christ. There's nothing quite as sweet as that. And so I, I, I join in prayer for our good friend, the former Custis, Ewan George Patrick Carodas, and some others. I join in prayer for one of my colleagues in the Fort Pierce, Pierce area, Dr. Christo, and your family. I join in prayer for those who, whose health is struggling, but whose faith is as firm. I thank God there's something that the devil can't take from us. I thank God that, that there's something that sickness and pain and death can't take from us. What a joy, what a glory heaven is going to be. I don't know about you, but, but for me, I'm longing for that city where there shall be no more sickness, suffering, nor pain. I'm longing for the place where from east to west and north to south, the earth shall be filled with the glory of God as waters cover the seas. And it's one more opportunity to testify of the goodness of God. You thought I'd forgotten you, right? No, my heart would forget to beat before I forget you, see? I will sing of the goodness of God. Right, little one? Jealousy is foreign to your nature, I know that. Ah, it's time to testify of God's goodness. Has God been good to you? Has God been good to you? Has he blessed you? Well, would you stand up? Would you stand up and sing the song together as we lift our hearts to our Father in heaven? I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, yes. For your mercy it never, never fails, fails me. never fails. That's why I'm alive tonight. All my days. That's why you're alive tonight. I've been held the goodness and the mercy of God all of our days. From the We've moment been held that I wake up, in the hands of God. Until I lay my I will head, sing of his goodness. I will sing. It's because of his of loving his kindness where we're here tonight. All of our lives. He's been faithful. If the devil had his way, he would have killed us in our sleep. If the devil had had his way, we would have been dead, but God has been good. Yes, he's better than good. With every breath, I will sing of the goodness, of the goodness of God. Surely, his goodness and mercy will follow us. It's running after. It's running after us. I know. Yes, yes, we can testify. All that we have and all that we are, we owe it to Him. I surrender. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. Gracious God and our loving Father who art in heaven, great is your faithfulness, O oh God our Father. We do not deserve the least of these your mercies. We confess we have not been good. All our righteousness has been like filthy rags, but, but you cover us with, with imputed and imparted righteousness. Because of the blood that flowed from Calvary, we have this hope that burns in our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord. Because of what you've done for us, because of what you're doing to us, because of what you're doing for us, God, we want the whole world to know there is no God like you. We want the world to know you are a loving God, a caring Father. Your word never changed. That those sin and sorrow and suffering have become our everyday companion. We know the plans you have for your children. And you will not rest until every valley is exalted. You will not rest until every mountain and hill is brought low. You will not rest until the devil is finally and permanently obliterated from the face of the globe. And righteousness shall cover the earth as waters cover the seas. We ask tonight once again that you would visit us in your mercy. 
somebody in this place, somebody at these outdoor sites. God, you've put it in our hearts to take church to where the people are. We pray for every place tonight, for every person, whether they be gathered in their own bar watching a screen, gathered by the street side. Lord, there are persons in your home right now listening as a speaker box carry the word from some place to the privacy of their own space. We beg in the name of Jesus tonight that the Holy Ghost will have his way. Touch these sinful lips, I beg you, Jesus, and do tonight with this lump of clay what you want done. Glorify your name. Let the word come alive tonight. May your will be done and may your kingdom come is our asking in Jesus' name. Let God's children say, Amen. I thank God for the honor he has given to us to sing and to, to play the instruments and to connect the sound and, and to carry the word because all of it together forms part of carrying this gospel. Every part you play, you're a part of this great plan. And I want to thank God for all of the team members, for all that you do. But even those who clean the place, are you listening to me? Thank God for all of you, for those who help us with the transportation. And you know, I, 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 I know the Lord is coming soon. I said, I know the Lord is coming soon. When you provide transportation free of cost and folk are so comfortable, you know the Lord is coming soon. I said, he's coming soon. You know, one, one of the, uh, you may not believe, one of the signs that disturb me, but one of the signs I know is part of the end. He talks about lukewarm spirituality. And I pray tonight that God will warm us up and, and get us doing our Father's business. There's a text in Matthew 7, 21 and onwards that ought not to escape our eyes. Jesus was speaking, he's addressing uh, multitudes, he, he is speaking to, to folk who came out of curiosity, he's speaking to folk who came to learn, he, he's speaking to folk who have a passion for salvation, he, he's speaking to folk who came uh, to resist his truth, and, and, and you have a lot of the same groups uh, even in this place and in other places where the word is being preached. And so he said, Matthew 7 and verse 21, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Now, if he had stopped there, the text would not be as frightening as it is when you look at it in its full context. He is speaking of the day of judgment. The day when the door of mercy would have slammed shut. The day when preaching of the gospel would have been over. The day when there'll be no more fancy dress hosts on the platform engaging you and appealing to you. The day when there'll be, there'll be no more cameramen and, and audio technician and audio visual persons and musicians and singers. He, he said, in that day, in that day, when the mercy seat is closed, in that day, when the appeal to surrender is taken back, you ought to know that God will not sit up there and be insulted by our recalcitrance forever. I said, God will not sit on his throne and be insulted by our stubborn resistance forever. The day is coming when God will say, enough is enough. In the words of Jeremiah, the harvest is past. The summer has ended, and somebody will say, and I'm not saying, but hear me, he's addressing religious people and all others. Many will say to me in that day, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not done many wonderful miracles in your name? Now that's a serious statement. But here, the response of Jesus, he said, then will I profess to them. Then, when, when they say that, in that day, when I would have gathered the sheep on the right 
and the goats on the left. In that day, when the dividing line will be finally drawn, can I testify, I can only preach the word of God, but I can't determine who'll be saved from who'll be lost. That's left in the hands of God and your response to the call of God. But as sure as God lives, he said there shall be a dividing line. He said, my sheep, John 10, 27, hear my voice, they respond to me, they obey my voice, they surrender to me, they obey my will, my sheep will hear my voice. Well, God, how will they hear? He said, I'll raise up preachers who will preach the everlasting gospel. My sheep will hear my voice. And I'll set the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And somebody said, there's going to be a great surprise in heaven. There are some folk that some church people think won't be there. There are some folk who think that you won't be there. And the trouble is, when you get there, you might not see them there. Are you listening to me? Heaven is going to be a, a place of great surprise. And that's why you and I have got to make our calling and election. What, everybody? S-U-R-E. Sure. So he said, many will say to me, in that day, in that day, Dr. Don Gilbert, in that day when... When, when the line is drawn, in that day when there shall be no more repentance, in that day when you won't have to be running between Montego Bay and Falmouth to be doing surgeries, in that day, in that day, even the surgery on the human heart will be open and done. In that day. Now look at the definite, he, he, he is saying, in that particular specific day, when knees shall be knocking, the judgment of God is about to fall on the head of unrepentant sinners. They'll, they'll say, we preach in your name. But you didn't preach what the Bible says. We cast out devils in your name. There, there is no, no, listen, salvation is not by your miracle working. Salvation is by your obedience to Jesus Christ and your acceptance of the will of God. Then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting. And these shall go away. They shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And I want you to understand you have an opportunity tonight. I want to talk about two fighting women. Now let me ask you a question. Most times when women fight, why do they fight? Well, I go tell the world it's not me, Cecil. Kamara said when they fight, they fight over men. It's Kamara who said it the most time when women fight, and she had company over this side. And the funny thing is that, uh, Alan, it's not the men who say it, it's the women who are saying, mo now if it was a man who said it, uh, if it was a man who said it, then I, I, I'd have some problem. But it's the women who are saying to me tonight that most times when they are their kind, <laughs> now Kamara is distancing herself. <laughs> when, when, when their kind fight, they're fighting over Alan's kind. <laughs> but the Bible has a marvelous prophetic outline of two fighting women. And I want to tell you that God in his prophetic design, he does declare that a woman in prophecy represents the church. But even outside of prophecy, God would even use this issue of marriage. In Ephesians 5, he, he said, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And he speaks here uh, of a relationship that God has between himself and his church. So the Bible, the Bible said that, that a woman in prophecy represents the church. A clean, pure woman represents God's true church. And here we have in the last book of the Bible, two symbolic representation. One a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Number two, a woman dressed in scarlet, decked in jewelry, sitting on a scarlet-colored beast. 
Now, a beast in prophecy represents a kingdom. I told you that from the seventh chapter of Daniel. Uh, I told you also this particular beast in Daniel and Revelation represents the apostate church of the closing days of earth's history. And we are right in that day. Come with me fast. Fasten your seatbelt. Get your pen. Write the text down. And tune in your brain tonight. Are you listening to me? I wanted to use your intelligence. And I'm happy only intelligent people listen to me preach. Are you listening to me? Uh, uh, so, so, woman... Number one, let me back up a little bit, is dressed. Revelation 12 said she is clothed in the sun. She has a moon under her feet. On her head, a crown of 12 stars. Woman number two sits on a beast that has seven heads and ten horns. And the Bible would speak later on clearly. But let's go tonight. Jeremiah 6 and verse 2, the word of God says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and a what? The word delicate there mean not that she's frail, but that she's charming and beautiful. The Old Testament's use of the word, you're going to understand it in their context. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and a beautiful woman. Then Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2, I am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have exposed you to one husband to Christ I, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So Paul is saying here, I'm jealous over you. I'm guarding you. I'm teaching you. I want you to walk right and live right. I want you to follow the Bible. Dress yourself in the truth of God because I want to present you as a pure virgin to Jesus. Now let's roll on. Revelation 12 and verse 1 said, now read with me, a great sign. The King James said, a great wonder appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. The sun here represents the purity of the gospel. Would you say amen? The sun, my friend, for us gives light to this darkened planet. The lamp uh, to God's children the light to God's children is both the living word who is Christ and the written word, the Bible. And so the woman representing God's church, the church of the living God has got to be clothed with the righteousness of God and the truth of the gospel. Are you listening to me? The Bible said she has a, a crown of 12 stars on her head and the moon under her feet. It, 12 is God's kingdom number. 7 is God's number of perfection and completeness. In the Old Testament, he chose the 12 sons of Jacob. In the New Testament, he chose the 12 disciples. 12 is God's kingdom number. And when you raise that to the 10th power, you have Revelation talking about God's complete church. And the picture there, he said, I saw 144,000. As God would help you understand that in the Old Testament and the New Testament, his kingdom number will come together and his true children will be connected by their obedience to the Lord God. The moon under her feet represent the mosaic system. I told you last week that God would use charts and symbols. Every time a lamb died, every time a bullock died in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to the Lamb of God. But when Jesus died, that system passed away. But the truth of the gospel still shines. And so she is standing on the moon. The moon has no light of its own. The moon receives its light from the sun. And so when the Son of God comes, when the Son of God came, when Christ died, that system of commandment contained in ordinances, the system, the sacrificial system, the system of the offering of sacrifices, that law ended when Jesus died, but the law of the Ten Commandments still stands. Are you listening to me? So let's go on now to woman number two. The Bible said, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowels, the King James said the seven vials, 
come up and talk with me, listen to me, this prophecy is set in the context for a generation who will not long from thence behold the seven last plagues. The issues from this woman will, will continue until the coming of Jesus. And so the Bible wants us to understand the importance of obedience to the thus set the Lord. And we have two women. One represents God's truth. The other represents the system of apostasy. If you understand that, would you say amen? Now... I just looked and saw the picture behind me. I didn't see clearly on, on my phone. Uh, two fight. Well, these are just quarreling. They ain't fighting yet. <laughs> you blame Pastor Franz for that, right? Two fighting. Well, they sure look angry. One has a sharp finger. The other one has two <laughs> fistic confrontation. Woman number one represents God's peaceful, law-abiding, Gospel declaring church. Woman number two represent the system of apostasy. And so the Bible said, come and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot. The King James uses the word the great whore. And, 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 and nobody here wants to be called a harlot. Nobody here wants to be called a whore. That you understand the context. God in woman number one represents his church, but here is an apostate system that God wants to describe, and the best description, he refers to her as a harlot. Listen to the word of God. He said, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. He speaks here of a mixture of truth and error. The Bible went on to say something else. Let me run on tonight. The Bible says, so he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet colored beast. What does a beast represent in prophecy? A kingdom. And the woman represents a church. A beast represents a kingdom or the state. The woman represents the church. Here we have a picture of a unity, a union, a combination, an alliance, an allegiance of church and state. Are you listening to me? And the Bible said that this combination of church and state has concluded or colluded to watering down God's truth. And the word of God continues. She was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Listen to me carefully. It is describing here the church in Rome who has become the mother of... Mm, there was a time when the protestant movement protested against Rome, but even in their protesting, they still carry Rome's doctrine of Sunday sacredness. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says... In this picture, well, let me give you a little history. Uh, and I, I, I love to give you stuff to write down. Uh, Bible commentary, A.R. Fawcett and David Brown, state and church are precious gifts of God, but the state being desecrated becomes beast-like, and the woman apostatizing becomes a harlot. When a woman leaves her husband and starts living wild, the Bible calls her a harlot. When the state abandons the God-given claim, there was a time when, when the persecuted folk fled from Europe to America. They looked for a church without a pope, and they looked for a country without a king. And when they found the Americas, they, they wrote, God bless America. They call it the land of the free and the home of the brave the protector of religious freedom. But the Bible is clear. There shall come a time when that protecting power will lend its authority to a persecuting power. Are you listening to me? The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Listen to me carefully. The description here, and I, I want to be bold tonight. God describes here the wearing of jewelry and the debt out here that only a harlot would do that. 
He described his church as a pure woman clothed in the sun. She has on no jewelry. She is not decked up. She is not half naked. Even in prophecy, God is showing us how we ought to conduct ourselves. Are you listening to me? The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having on her head, in her hand, a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. The cup represents here the, the combination of her false doctrine. Then the Bible said this calls for a mind which has wisdom. He said the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. There's only one city in the whole world that sits on seven hills. And that's the Vatican City. Listen to me carefully. The word of God is clear. Sunday sacredness didn't come to us from God. I shall show you a little later. Let me run on and skip some things out so we can get there. Upon her head was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Babylon is a code name here. When John was writing, the ancient city of Babylon, the ancient king of Babylon had passed gone. I told you one night in prophecy, Babylon was the first kingdom to rule the world. Babylon was followed by who? Media Persia. Then by who? Greece. Then by who? Rome. John lived in Rome. John was placed in a pot of boiling oil. When God doesn't want you dead, no hot oil can kill you. I say, if God no want you dead, nothing can kill you. And they banished him 50 miles south on the Aegean Sea. But God protected him. And while he was out there, he got the book of Revelation. Are you listening to me? John was the last of the surviving disciples. As a matter of fact, John was the only one of the 12 disciples to die a natural death. All the others were persecuted. You can give up a job for Jesus. All the others lost their lives. Some were plunged through with a sword. Some were crucified upside down. All the others, are you listening to me? But they died being faithful to God's commandments. They died keeping the seventh day Sabbath. They died being loyal to the faith of Jesus Christ. And tonight, the un believing on godly world cannot claim it doesn't have godly examples and I want to tell you that their faithfulness is a rebuke to our cowardice their allegiance to God willing to die for God willing to lay down their lives and we can't even uh, uh, so, COVID gone long time Many of God's children still in hiding. The trouble is you can't hide from yourself. COVID run gone long time. And they're still in hiding. So uh, who you are hiding from? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who are you hiding from? <laughs> I'm going to behave myself tonight. Listen to me carefully. Their sacrificial death is a rebuke to us. When they love Christ so much that they did not seek to save their lives. And we find monkey excuses. They carried the gospel far and wide. They spent and was willing to be spent. But we're saving ourselves. And we, I ain't going to work myself too hard because I got to say, Tande, listen to me. The Bible said, down throughout the entire ministry of the early church, they preached what Jesus taught. They obeyed the Ten Commandments. The only Sabbath they knew was the seventh day of the week. But hear what Paul says. Hear what Paul says. Paul, Paul, the giant of the New Testament, Paul who wrote 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament. Paul, who went to jail, who was beaten up, but he went everywhere preaching the gospel. Paul, who was shipwrecked, 
but he wouldn't give up. He said, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some will depart from the faith. The Bible uses faith here, F-A-I-T-H, in, in two contexts, but here it is, it is used in the context of a body of doctrines, a system of belief. So he said some will depart from the system of belief, the body of doctrine that God gave to Jesus, who he gave to the angels, who gave it to John. He said in the last days there are folk who would want to be called God's children, but who want to live their own lives. There are people who will be going to church, but they don't want to do what God says. He, he says, in the last days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Doctrines that have no basis in the word of God. I challenge you every night I come here. If I tell you anything I can't prove from the Bible, don't come back. But if I tell it to you and it's in the Bible, you are obligated under God to follow what the Bible says. He says, for the time will come when they will not like sound doctrine. The time will come, the closer you come to the second coming of Jesus, the world will want a smooth doctrine. Folk would run to come and get baptized if, if I would tell them, you can live anyhow and still be called a Christian. Not Nagasa. Got to be willing to deny yourself and take up the cross and follow Christ. Got to be willing to straighten out your life. Got to be willing to abide by the plain. Thus said the Lord God. He said the time will come the closer you get to the coming of Jesus. There'll be churches allowing folk to do anything. Live anyhow. Marry anybody you want. Male or female. Male to male and female to female. And still be called a pastor, a priest. Are you listening to me? Well, listen to me carefully. God is not the author of confusion. He said, uh, preach the everlasting gospel. There has got to be a line of demarcation between truth and error. The world has got to know what the Lord God says. Are you listening to me? He said, some will not like it. Some won't want to hear it. But when hell begins to burn, I don't have any heaven to put you. And I can't tell you merely what you want to hear because you don't have any heaven to put me either. Got to do what God says. And he has no delight in the death of the sinner. He wants all of us to come to repentance and live. He wants all of us, pastors and reverence and bishops, to follow the Bible. Are you listening to me? He looked at Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a rotten rich man, and said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Your money can't save you. Your position can't save you. Except a man be born of the water and of the word of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. The time will come because they have itching ears. They will heap to themselves teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. This is no entertainment center. This is no popularity center. This is a place where the straight word of God Almighty must be declared. Two fighting women. He said they will turn away their ears from the truth. They'll turn away their ears from the truth. And when you turn away your ear from the truth, is only a lie you will hear. You'll be turned into fables. I thank God for the Bible. I thank God for the word. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Why do you think I jump between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Why do you think I pull these stuff together? Because you've got to understand all scripture given by God's inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Would you hear the word of God tonight? But this woman, this woman is filled with the cup of man's doctrines filled with the cup of her own filthy, watered-down stuff. And uh, 
I skipped, I, I cut out something I, in my heart, I shouldn't have cut it. This, this book, The Dignity and Duties of the Priest, volume two, page, volume 12, page two, is it, if you, you pull that up clearer, my eyes, let me, let me look for my other pair of eyes so I can, I can tell you exactly what I, uh, yes, th th that book, when you get to my age, not even your glasses work well, are you listening to me? But listen to me, <laughs> volume 12, page two, there is this book, uh, in the Roman church that, that, that governs the, 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 the conducts and the teachings of the priests. And I, I, I thought it was interesting, but I, 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 should, I shouldn't have cut out the earlier part. It, it, it talks about the issue of the power of the priest. So it says, when you're dying and, and, and Jesus comes to your bedside, they said, the priest takes precedence. And so that quotation is followed by this one. God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priest, either to pardon or not to pardon, according as the priests, they the priests, refuse or give absolution, meaning free you from your sins. The sentence of the priest comes first and God subscribes to it. But can I tell you what your Bible says? Your Bible said you can come boldly to the throne of grace where you can make your own request known to God for you have a high priest who is seated at the right hand of God, who is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. Can I tell you, you don't even need me to pray for you. You can go on your knees, and if you are genuine in seeking God, he'll hear your prayer. Are you listening to me? But they say, they say that the priest has the power and, and that God has to abide by the judgment of the priest. That's from the cup of their abomination. We have one Savior who is Christ. That's an artist's conception. I don't know what picture Christ looked like, but the artist paints this picture of, of Christ on the cross. Are you listening to me? And the same Christ who died for us is the one who gave us the Sabbath as a sign between himself and his children. Are you listening to me? The Roman church says Sunday is a mark of their authority. God says the seventh day Sabbath is a mark of his authority. In the cup, you have all kind of doctrines. You have the doctrine of Sunday sacredness. You have the doctrine of purgatory. You have the doctrine of a man-made priesthood claiming more power over the church than Christ himself. And God says, in Ezekiel 20, hallow my Sabbath, keep it holy, and it'll be a sign between you and God. Are you listening to me? It'll be a sign your obedience signified your God's child, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. What does the Roman church say is a sign of their authority? God says the Sabbath is a sign of his authority. Let me read to you now from the writings of the Roman church so you, don't know, you, you will know it's not my saying. So here we go. Catholic record, September 1. And you have the year. They said Sunday is um, our mark of authority. The Roman church says Sunday is their mark of authority. Watch this, watch this. The church is above the Bible. The transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Let me paraphrase, write it down. Don't say me say, write it down for yourself. Don't be upset with me. All I'm doing is digging up the record so you can see it for yourself. The Roman church says Sunday is a mark of their authority. They said the church is above the Bible. I believe the Bible is above the church. Are you listening to me? I believe the word of the church must take its instruction from the word of God. We can't instruct God. 
We've got to take our instruction from the Word of God. Now, let me tell you more. Fasten your seatbelt. St. Catherine Catholic Church Sentinel, May 21, 1995. Perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change the church ever did happen in the first century. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any directions in Scripture, but from the church's sense of its own power. Can I pause here? They said, listen to me carefully, it may upset you, but don't be upset with me. They said, the church transferred the Sabbath from back up they said not from any directions in scripture can I ask you look in your Bible if you find one Bible verse how many one if you find one Bible verse that says God or the prophets or Jesus changed the Sabbath from the seventh day. Ask your priest for it. Ask the reverend for it. Ask the bishop for it. Take it from anywhere in the 66 books of the Bible. If you find one Bible verse, bring it come. Even if I'm closing this Sabbath coming, you still have all day Thursday to search, all night Thursday night, all day Friday, all day Saturday, bring me one Bible verse and you can collect 10 million Jamaican dollars. Bring me one Bible verse from anywhere in the Bible. And Maynard said I should increase it to 10 million. Listen to me carefully. One Bible verse that says God or Jesus or the apostles or the prophets changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day. When Christ was here, the only Sabbath he knew was the seventh day. When Christ comes back, the only Sabbath that will be kept in the earth made new is the seventh day. Now, if it was in the beginning, and if it will be in the end, what happened in the middle? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, We've preached in your name, cast out demons in your name, worked miracles in your name. He said, then will I profess to them, I don't know you. They said the holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday. This is the Roman church telling you what they did. This is the Roman church who claimed to be the mother of all Protestant churches, this is the Roman church, and the term Catholic simply means universal. This is the Roman church saying the holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any directions in Scripture, but from the church's sense of its own power. Then listen to this last piece. You may think it was written by an Adventist. It is written in St. Catherine's Catholic Church Sentinel, published May 21, 1995. They said, people who think that the scriptures should be their sole authority, they said, if you believe that the Bible is your sole authority, you should logically become Seventh-day Adventist and keep the Sabbath holy. And no me say so, you know. I am not the one who said, you know. I am just reading to you what they have said. And God said this gospel of the kingdom. He said, I saw three angels flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God 
and give glory to him. Well, how do we give him glory? By living a life of surrender to him, by obedience to his will. Fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come. The next quotation said, Christianity is indebted to the Catholic Church for the institution of Sunday as the Sabbath day. Are you listening to me? This is from the Roman Church. They said the Christendom, the Christian world, owes their Sunday sacredness not to the Bible, but to the Roman Catholic Church. In keeping Sunday, non-Christians are simply following the practice of the Catholic Church for over 1,800 years. It's a tradition and not a Bible ordinance. Are you listening? These two women, the woman clothed with the sun, represents God's true church, teaching the gospel, preaching the Bible, teaching God's will. Woman number two, sitting on the beast, used the state authority. In the dark ages, the Roman church persecuted God's children. You read about the crusade. That's why we, I hardly use the word crusade. I ever prefer to say evangelistic series because crusade has an evil connotation. The Roman church hunted those who didn't bow to her teachings, who didn't accept her false doctrines. Listen, God didn't raise up the church to kill anybody. God raised up the church to give life and hope. The church ordered folk killed on sight. Listen to me carefully. I wish I had time to tell you the man who translated the Bible in English even after he was dead the church ordered his body to be exhumed and they burned him as a heretic are you listening to me Jerome John Huss Martin Luther all of those who dared to challenge the church but I tell you this God's truth will not be silent. God's truth will not be silent. Folk may be upset with me. They can lock me up, but they can't shut me up. Are you listening to me? The word of God must be declared. And the closer, listen, listen to the Baptist Church Manual, Dr. Edward T. Hiscox, November 13, I think it, from, from way back, he said, what a pity. This is in the Baptist Church Manual. He said, what a pity. That Sunday comes branded with the mark of paganism and christened with the name of the Son God. Then adopted, sanctioned by papal apostasy. That's the Baptist manual saying that the Roman church apostatized and brought in the Sunday sacredness as a legacy to Protestantism. In the encyclical letters of Pope Leo the 13th, page 304, he said, we the Pope hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Are you listening to me? I'm only a representative of the kingdom of God, but God holds his own place. I'm a servant, he's the master. I am the clay, he's the potter. Are you listening to me? But they claim to be so powerful. And that's why they have adopted the name Holy Father. The Bible said, call no one on earth your Holy Father. One is your Father and he is in heaven. Are you listening to me? The word of God is clear. And the, one of the greatest part of the controversy has to do with the issue of the Sabbath. The Roman church said they changed the Sabbath. God says he never changed it. God says he gave you his Sabbath to be a sign between himself and his children. Are you listening to me? And you may know that he's the Lord who sanctifies. The prophet predicted that the, her, her priest, can you, have you ever wondered that all of the churches who tell you you don't have to keep the Sabbath. They also tell you you can eat anything and drink anything. Hear what the prophecy says. 
The word of God says, her priests have violated my law, profaned my holy things, and they have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy. They have made no difference between the unclean and the clean, and they have hidden their eyes from the Sabbath, and I am profaned among them, said the Lord God. Is it clear to you? Do you love the word? If you have an open mind, an honest heart, and a clear conscience, you will do what the Bible says. I said, if you have an open mind, an honest heart, and a clear conscience, you will do what the Bible says. You can't tell God you don't know. Let me close tonight. Search the Bible for yourself. Look in the Word of God for yourself. Look in the Bible for yourself. Hear me, priest. Hear me, reverend. For God's sake, preach what the Bible says. But if the sheep are led astray, it's not just the shepherd who will pay. Because God gives you eyes to see. He gives you ears to hear. He gives you a mind to understand. And I thank God that Wherever the internet is available, the word of God tonight is going leaps and bounds. He said, carry the everlasting gospel to the ends of the earth. Preach it, even if they don't want to hear it. Preach it, so in their bedroom, they, they, they will hear, they'll have an opportunity. Preach it, preacher. Are you listening to me? Give the wind a mighty voice. Preach it. Carry the everlasting gospel. And I saw an angel declaring Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. He speaks of the fall of religious confusion. In the Catholic mirror, Cardinal Gibbon said, reason and common sense demands the acceptance of one of these two alternatives. Either Protestantism and the keeping holy of Saturday. The Protestant movement began, listen to me, when Martin Luther in 1517 nailed his 95 thesis on the church door in Wittenberg. He was a Roman Catholic priest who did, he didn't want to leave the church, but he was tired of the errors being taught by his own church. If I would read to you some stuff that Martin Luther wrote in his thesis, you may think I'm condemning Roman Catholicism. Listen, he wrote it. He wrote against purgatory. He wrote against the blasphemous stuff. He wrote against the error of his purpose. He, he, he wrote them and they ordered him killed on sight. Are you listening to me? Reason and common sense demand the acceptance of one or the other. If you are a true protestant, you ought to keep Saturday holy according to the Bible. Or you become a Catholic and keep Sunday. And he said, compromise is impossible. As a boy, there was a girl's game. So hear me now. As a boy, there was a girl's game. As a boy, there was a girl's game that girls used to play. And then if you, you turn up late and they, and they don't have an even number, they, they could pick you as a jackman. Now the jackman means you can play on either side and you can't get stumped and you don't have to feel. You just enjoy the game. Huh? Have you ever played the game? Well, you can't be jacker on both sides. Are you listening to me? Got to make up your mind. It's either you are on God's side and you do what the Bible says or you are on the other side and follow man's tradition. But you can't walk the fence. You can't be neutral. You cannot be neutral. And the old patriarchs would sing songs of their faith. When you sing the song, a mighty fortress is our God, the bulwark never failing. 
In that song, you have a line that says, we're not the right man on our side. Our striving would be losing. Mm? But God stands up for his children. God protects his truth. And sometimes when it comes to surrendering your life to God, you may lose some friends. But any friend you lose because you want to serve God was not a true friend in the beginning. Any friend you have to give up to serve God, tell them, Galong! And if you don't understand that in British language, tell them, please go ahead. Are you listening to me? Tell them, Galong! But you follow Jesus. I want you to understand tonight you have a decision to make. There are two sides. Woman number one represents God's true church teaching the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Woman number one preaches the acceptance of Christ as Savior, preaches the pardon for sin through the sacrifice of Jesus. Woman number one preaches baptism by immersion, not sprinkling. Woman number one gives the clear call that Jesus gave, repent and be baptized. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Then he said, teach them to observe all things. But, but what, watch this. He said, preach the gospel. Baptize them. And then keep on teaching them. You don't have to know everything to be baptized. You just need to know that Christ is a savior. You are a sinner. And the gospel calls you to come and be forgiven. To come and be saved. God gives power to live right. I've seen drunkards who never thought they could live a straight life. But the gospel fixed them up. I was preaching in the Colombian Union. And a young man came to me on the closing weekend. And I don't like to go anywhere for more than three weeks. Me love me yard. No way no better than yard. I love my home. But I love sharing the word of God. And he comes by. He sits in his car. And, and one night I'm preaching about this. When the meeting was over, I remember three persons. Apart from the lady who, who takes care of of, of, of my stuff, I stay at the, the uh, let me not go into that, but I remember three persons. One was a 95 year old man, 95. And I said to myself, if I get to 95, I'd love to be as boasty as he is. He walks about two miles to the tent and he comes Kimber up, straight up at 95. Are you listening to me? 95, but he walks every night. The next lady, she was nine months pregnant. Her name was Francine. I said, Francine, you're going to have baby right under the tent. So I'm going to walk with my gloves and my scissors. She was a Catholic. And she came from the first week. And, and, and she kept coming back. And, and she said, Pastor, I'm learning. And I can't miss it. I'm learning. And she got... I had a problem deciding how they're going to baptize her. She's nine months pregnant. And she insists... She must be baptized. So we got down to Colombian Ocean, out in the Colombian Sea. And I said, Chris, Francine, we're going to have to walk you out until the water almost cover your chin. We can't afford to bring you way back. So we're going to walk you out in the sea until the water comes higher and higher. So we just put your head down a few inches so the water cover your head. And Francine got baptized, rejoicing, nine months pregnant. There are two other persons I must tell you about. So here's one. This young man stopped me and he, he said, I have never, ever heard anything like this because I don't go to church. He said, I was, I was christened. In the Roman church. And by the way, if you know anything about, about South America and Central America, it's predominantly Roman Catholic. The Adventist pastor never had license to marry anybody. They had to be married by the Roman priest and then come to the Adventist church and, and wash it off. Listen to me. The young man said, I gotta be honest with you, I can't resist what I'm hearing. But let me tell you, I'm a drug dealer. 
He said, I don't use it, but I have Colombian policemen who pilot my drugs across the ocean. I have their name on my pay bill. I don't use it. I don't store it. I have persons who store the drugs. I have, I have warehouses. I have Colombian police officers who handle my stuff. But I can't go back to that. Do you think God can be bothered with someone like me? Let me tell you something. I walked out into Colombian waters, baptized 42 persons, most of whom has never been to an Adventist church before. All their lives, Sunday worshipers. And uh, Saturday night when the tent was closing up, the young man came in. That was his first Sabbath in the church. And we were, the pastor and the members were saying their farewell and, and giving their thank you. And he came up to where we were sitting and he whispered, he said, could, could they, would they allow me to say something? I said, sure. He said, but I have never talked in church. And I got up and I whispered to the pastor. I took the mic and I said, congregation, we baptized a young man earlier this morning. This is his first day in church. And he wants to say something. And he begins by saying, folk, I have never come inside church. I don't know how to talk in church, but I thank God he brought this man here. And I can't go back. He said, pray for me. I don't know what the future holds, but I tell you, there's something I know tonight. I've made money that don't make sense to me now, and I want to live the rest of my life serving the God that this young man has revealed to me. I did tell you three persons, but there's a fourth one. He's a young millionaire. Didn't do drugs. He came by. And, and he asked me a strange question. He asked me, how much do you charge for half an hour of Bible study? He said, I'm a businessman and I know the guys I deal with, they get paid by the hour. I know I can't afford your time. I've been listening to the stuff and I know it must cost a lot. I said, son, freely I have received and freely I give. He said, are you serious? I said, sure. He, he said, can I come by your hotel? I said, I'll come by your house. I said, you pick me up, I'll come by your house. I want to use your Bible. I want to sit in your place to show you the will of God for your life. He came to pick me up. Listen to me. When I got to his house, like a mini palace, I said, all right. Uh, uh. He said, sir, where do you want to sit? What? I said, I have this chair. I have that chair. I said, listen, this one is good enough right here on the veranda. Right here on your patio, looking out on the beautiful ocean. I said, what question do you have? Do you know which chapter he took me to? He took me to Revelation 13 and Revelation 17. He said, explain this to me. And if you can't do it in one evening, I can understand. I said, well, the wonderful thing for you, I'm not preaching tonight. I have the whole day and the whole evening. And he said, he said, I heard you talk about dumplings. I, I'm also a chef. Now, is not any and anybody cook for ice in the boy, you know. So I said, well, let me tell you something. I've got a lot to go through, so I can't miss any time for cooking. You, you got to sit down. We went to the Word, and he came the night, and he said, I, I sent for my wife. I sent her a ticket. Can you come back tomorrow? I have sent for her to come to hear what you have been telling me. And I had the privilege of watching him walk out in the ocean and his wife surrendering their lives to Jesus. We speak to nations. The kingdom is coming. We speak to nations. The everlasting gospel comes to you. 
two fighting women. One represents God's true church. The other represents the system of apostasy. Whose side are you on? One preaches obedience to God's commandments. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Religious confusion is fallen. I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Are you listening to me? God is saying, come out of error. Come in the light. Come away from this apostate woman. Come out of her and do not share in her sins lest you receive of her plagues. I'm done. In the future, the final issue will center around worship. Are you listening to me? In the days of Noah, God invited folk to take a stand, but they didn't listen. But their unbelief didn't stop the flood from coming. I'm done. In the days of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to take a stand. The fire couldn't destroy them because God protected them. In the days of Jesus, he invites us to take a stand. The thief on the cross took a stand. Are you listening to me? In the early days, some were burnt alive, but they took a stand. Some were fed to wild animals, but they took a stand. Some were sawn asunder, but they took a stand. Will you take a stand tonight for obedience to the will of God? I'm done. But I have to challenge you, you who are joining me virtually. I want you to type in the chat, I am taking a stand for truth. Type in the chat, I'm taking my stand for truth. Type in the chat, I'm taking my stand for the everlasting gospel. And if you are tonight by any of these sites, tonight I challenge you, take a stand and walk out on Saturday. Step in the water and seal your commitment in baptism to Jesus Christ undone. Sing whatever God plays on your heart, children. Somebody tonight has got to take a stand. Yes. Guide along the way. Because Lord, if you lead me, Lord, if you lead I cannot stray. Follow cannot the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow Christ's example. Surrender your life to him. Obey his commandments. Keep the seventh day Sabbath. Be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Repent and follow Jesus. You are weak, but he's strong. He'll give you strength. He'll give you power. He'll forgive your transgressions. He'll redeem you from sin. My strength to guide me over life's weakest hour. To guide Is there someone tonight who's saying, God, I want to follow you. I want to learn more. If there's somebody tonight, you're in here and you want to raise your hand. You want to raise your hand and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to follow what the Bible says. Would you raise your hand tonight? Yes. Lead me. Lead me. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Lead me and guide me along the way. Yes, that ought to be your prayer. You're watching tonight from Stuyvesant, from Lighthouse Tabernacle, from Brooklyn South. You're watching tonight from Africa. From England, from Africa, from India, from Kuwait, you're watching tonight. From Jamaica, you're watching tonight. From some site, you're watching tonight. This ought to be your prayer. Lead me. Lead me, O oh Lord. Do you want God to lead you? Type in the chat, lead me, Lord. Tonight. 
if you have not surrendered if I you're not lost. yet following the commandments of God you and you want Christ to lead you type in the chat lead me oh Lord we are lost me. if he takes his hand from us we I are blind, blind without his light to see without thy light we're blind without the word of God to see we're lost without the hand of God so I'm putting yes all my trust my trust oh Lord in thee yes in trouble. You want to ask God to lead you. If you are not yet baptized, if you're not yet surrendered, I challenge you, make that decision tonight. Wherever around the world you're watching, scan that QR code. Scan that QR code. Scan that quick response code. Make that decision. Make that decision tonight. Surrender to the light of God's word. So let's surrender to the truth of God. Obey the voice of the living God. Let me walk each day with thee. This ought to be your prayer. Lead me. Would you stand tonight? Would you stand? You want God to lead you. You want the Lord God to lead you. Would you stand with me as we close the service? Lead me and guide me. Lead me. And guide me along the way. Guide the road is dark without him. It's dangerous without him. It's dangerous to walk without him. But if he lead you, you cannot stray. If Jesus lead you, you cannot stray. Would you put your trust in him? Would you put your trust in him? Is there someone here tonight? Maybe, maybe you've been following a tradition other than what you're hearing tonight and you want us to pray with you and for you. Pastor Daya is walking by you with a card. If you hold your hand up, you, you, you want God to lead you. If you hold your hand up, take the card. He'll lend you a pen or a pencil. I see a hand over there, Pastor. There's one over there. Yes. Do you know him today? Do you know him today? Make that decision, make that decision. Ask him to guide you. Ask him to lead you. Maybe you've never heard these things before. Maybe, maybe all your life you've been keeping Sunday, believing it to be the Sabbath. Maybe all your life you've been following the doctrines of mankind. But tonight you're hearing, tonight you're hearing, and you want to be honest in your heart. If you raise your hand, if you raise your hand, they'll give you a card. If you're watching online, scan that code, scan that QR code, call that number on the line, call that number, text that number. Whatever you do tonight, you have an opportunity right now. And without him, without him, I surely fail. Without him, we'll fail. But with Jesus, you cannot fail. Without I would be him, nothing. Life would be hopeless. Be drifting. Listen, like a ship without a sail. Like but tonight, a he'll lead you. He'll guide you. My time is gone. My time is gone. But since the days of our meetings are running to a close, since we're coming to the close of these meetings, I'm using so some time tonight. I'm using some time tonight. Because very soon, We'll be done out here. Very soon, we'll be finished out here. Let him guide you. You're listening in your home tonight. You're listening from Mud Hole tonight. You're listening from Blue Hole. You're listening from Migrail. You're listening from Top Bird Brown. You're listening from Junction. You're listening from Prospect. You're listening. You're listening from St. Elizabeth. You're listening from, from Obey. You're listening from Fishing Village. You're listening from Railway Lane. You're listening, you're listening. Ask him to guide you. Make that decision by the grace of God tonight. Let him lead you and guide you. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I have to ask you, do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know the Savior? 
the one who went to Calvary, the one who loves you with an everlasting love. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the author and the finisher of your faith? Do you know the Lord of the Sabbath? Do you know the man of Calvary? Without him, how lost we would be. I'm done. I'm done. But you've got to sing it. Lead me and guide me. I'll just sing it one more time. Yes. Along the way. Somebody tonight. You need the guidance of God. Somebody online tonight. Somebody watching me. Somebody watching right now. You need the hand of God. You need the spirit of the living God to guide you. Don't be stubborn. Don't close your mind against the, the light. Don't close your mind against the truth. Don't resist the call of the Holy Ghost. Don't slam the door shut against the Spirit of God. Sing it one more time. Sing it one more time. I'm praying for somebody in my heart. I'm praying for some young people. I'm praying for some professional. I'm praying for some reverend. I'm praying for some preacher. I'm praying for some senior person. We need the guidance of God tonight. Hallelujah. If he leaves, we can't go astray. is running out. Listen to me. Make your mind up. Time is running out. I'm done. I'm done tonight. Let us pray. If you love the word of God, can I hear you say amen? If you love the word of God, can I hear you say praise the Lord? Oh, blessed God, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We need your guiding hand. We are lost without your hand to lead us. We can't even hold on to you, God. Our hands are too weak to hold on to yours. Hold us in this rotten world. Hold us in our frailty. Hold us, God. Help us to understand, though we gain the whole world, if we lose our soul, it will not profit. You've said to us, not everyone that saith Lord, Lord, but he that doeth the will of the Father. You've said, God, in that day, in the day of judgment, when there shall be no more preaching, in the day of judgment, you shall declare, in that day, and it will say, Lord, Lord, we preach in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We work miracles in your name. But God, you said, not everyone that saith Lord, but he that doeth the will of God. In the last book of the Bible, you said, blessed are they that do your commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. We see the fight between these two women. One represents the truth, the other represent the doctrines of men. Many of your children have been persecuted by an apostate harlot claiming to be your church. But thank God you've preserved the Holy Bible. They burnt alive those who dare to stand up for you. Even the man who did his best to have the Bible in the language of the people. Though he died a natural death, they ordered his body dug up and they branded him as a heretic because he dared to defend the Bible. And tonight, God, folk get upset with me because I tell them the truth. Tonight, God, there are folk who want the doctrines of men than the word of God. Tonight, Jesus, right now, there are honest pastors confused right now, but let the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh, fall afresh, fall afresh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on somebody, fall afresh, 
fall afresh. Give the wind a mighty voice tonight. Carry the gospel to the ends of the earth. Remind somebody it does not profit to gain the whole world and lose their soul. Give us an open mind. Give us an honest heart. Give us a clear conscience to follow the open Bible. Bless us tonight, Jesus. There's a devil who's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But tonight, God, there are people at these outdoor sites. There are people in their homes listening to a speaker carrying the gospel. There are people in rum bars tonight where we have put up screens. They're listening now. They're watching now. God, there are young men and young ladies. There are hundreds and hundreds of people. Tonight, God, they need to make a decision. Tonight in their heart and Sabbath in the water because time is running out. Holy Ghost, we ask you. Hallelujah. Lead somebody. Guide somebody along the way. Let them know if you leave them, they cannot stray. God, somebody right now is wondering how they're going to live when they make the adjustment to keep the seven-day Sabbath. Some may lose their jobs. There's a pastor right now who's listening. There's a reverend right now, God, but he's got to understand that obedience to you. He's got to put his prestige aside. He's got to put whatever it is aside. He's got to trust you, obey you, surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lead and guide along the way. For if you lead us, we cannot stray. Some through the fire, some to the flood, some to the valley, some over hills and mountains. Rough journey ahead, but someday, someday, truth shall triumph forever over error. Someday, there shall be no more sickness. Someday, no more suicide. Someday, no more cervical cancer. No more prostate cancer. No more pancreatic cancer. No more liver cancer. No more brain tumor. No more clot in the lungs. No more clot in the heart. No more sickness. No more sorrow. Sin and the devil that causes sin shall be forever, permanently, totally uprooted, eradicated from the face of the earth. And truth shall cover the earth as waters cover the sea. Help us to understand. It's time to take a stand. Thank you for your word tonight. Watch over us, blessed Jesus. We can't keep ourselves. We are weak and we need your strength and power. But if you lead us, we can't stray. In the valley, you restore our souls. God, I don't know who it is, but there's somebody right now despondent in their valley. I know the time is long gone, Jesus, but if they have to leave, I pray right now, blessed God, for that somebody about to take his life, about to take her life. Pray for that somebody. Shine a light in the valley. Bring a hole down in the valley. Because in the valley, you restore soul. Thank you. Thank you. You are the lifter up of our heads. Thank you. You are the restorer of paths to dwell in. Thank you. 
You are our bread when we're hungry. Water when we're thirsty. Thank you, you are the healer of all of our diseases. And if you choose not to heal us down here, save us, oh blessed God, because we know on the other side there'll be no more cancer. There'll be no more distress. There'll be no more challenge. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more domestic violence. There'll be no more drug use. There'll be no more rape. There'll be no more murder. There'll be no more funeral services. Hallelujah! 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 Have your own way tonight. But before I say amen, walk by that bedside. Walk into that house. Walk into that dark valley. Walk by that mountain trail. Walk into that rum bar. Walk by the site by the roadside. Walk by the site at the fishing village. Walk by railway lane, walk uptown, walk downtown, walk round town, walk through town. And bring hope, bring salvation, bring victory for the glory of your name and the saving of our souls. Is our asking in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. Amen. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God cause his face to shine upon you. And one by one, God's faithful children are being called to rest. This coming Sunday, we'll have right in here the funeral service of a former president, statesman, Christian, husband, father, counselor, guide, and friend, the Honorable Claude Sill Plummer. And we pray for his family. Blessed are the dead who died the Lord. So we ask you to join us here at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning as we have the Thanksgiving service of a president we love dearly, a friend, a brother, a husband, and father. But you want to make your call in an election, sure. Accept the will of God for your life. Surrender your life to Jesus. Wherever you're watching from, we speak to nations. The kingdom is coming. Prepare to meet your God. There'll be no meeting tomorrow night, but we'll see you 6.30 on Friday evening. And I give you a cue, I give you a clue. The days out here are shorter than you think. Before you know it, we'll be gone. But don't have a heart attack. You've had four long weeks. Would you say amen? But there's still two preaching service left in week number four. Beyond that, mina no. God bless you. We hand you over to a handsome guy and a cute looking girl. And after them, the best foster triplets in the world. Only one of a kind. Are you listening to me? May God bless you. We speak to nations. The kingdom is coming. Amen, amen, amen. We praise the Lord. Amen. You know, Kamara, tonight we can say that the grace of God that bringeth salvation appear to all hearts and with that we thank you all for worshiping with us tonight oh yes and i'm sure you've heard the truth yes. and you know what the bible says it shall set you free Amen. and on that note on behalf of the entire team yes my name is kamara dixon alongside alan green 
We say see you again on Friday night at 6.30 p.m. We'll do it again, the Footprints of Hope, next level way. Taking us out this evening will be the Foster Triplets. We speak to nations. Good night, everyone. The kingdom is come.